liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? It's kind of like tripping over myself there in the intro <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you're kind of struggling there. I yeah. was wondering about that. It's, you... the, it's the pain, man. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here in pain. Like, I thought I'm maybe really you'd had hurting. too much of this wonderful whiskey we're drinking. I've only had two sips. Yeah, that's not too so much. <laughs> Not generally. Yeah. It's pretty pretty strong stuff. I was I... hoping it would calm down the <laughs> the, the pain. pain. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but we'll see. I, uh, yeah. It's not that. It's it's 115 proof. Yeah. It's not that strong. It's got some flavor to it. Put some hair on your chest. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's where it came from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All that whiskey. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, okay. So this is Yellowstone 115, and it's a... Um, and it's not named after the TV series. Yeah, and it's a barrel pick. Yeah. Uh, presumably. I mean, it's got a label on it like it's a barrel pick for ABC. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know a whole lot about them. I just opened this last night. Yeah. And uh, But I like it. It's tasty. Like I say, it's not... Yeah. like it, Just like the other night, it's not my favorite. Like, yeah. I don't know that I'd, like, seek this out. But mm-hmm. I, it's not bad. It's got It's a little more stone fruit flavor than I usually go for I, yeah i like the spicier like yeah. peppery and then like the kind of traditional vanilla caramel uh, yeah. stuff more than this this has to me the the flavor that stands out or that i can identify because i'm not very good at that kind of thing yeah. there there's a flavor there that's kind of like um like a, a cherry cough drop oh yeah i can see that um this is kind of like sweet i don't want to say medicinal because it's not Exactly. I mean, it because it sounds worse than I mean for yeah. it to sound yeah. in this. Like, it's a very pleasant flavor, I think. Yeah. Um, and when I say cherry cough drop, I'm thinking like Ludens. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, the Ludens. Not like Halls. Yeah. Um, so, and Ludens is practically candy. Yeah. Oh, we're going in the Ludens season, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got bags of that stuff everywhere, man. Yeah. I'll have to start stocking up. Yeah. Um, yeah, but other than that. No, yeah. all as well. All as well. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Yeah, I um I didn't take any narcotics, so I should be able to make it through the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. If we start slurring his words, we'll yeah. know. <laughs> it's either that I drank too fast, or I'm not making it through the podcast. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Either way, um, I it's probably time that we address the Lahaina fire, the Maui, the Maui. Yeah. Wildfires, Wildfire. we're going to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quotes there. Um, I don't know. You're getting awful conspiracy on me already, Mike. I don't know. Well, what I mean is it's not exactly a natural disaster. And yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not trying to intimate that I believe a <laughs> cat climbing to the top of a tower behind me. It's mm. so loud. Yeah. I wonder if you hear that on the podcast. Um, I, I'm not buying into the energy weapons thing. I think that <laughs> oh, yeah. that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. This time, in this specific scenario, yeah, that's ridiculous. Sure. Uh, we so. can qualify that if you feel that that's important. But <laughs> I do. Um, no, I mean, it It seems that it likely started with down power lines yeah. um, from the tropical storm, or your hurricane, I guess, at that point that came through, Hurricane Dora. Yeah. Um, pushed down some power lines. They were still electrified. Uh, there's a whole bunch of grassland around there. It's dry there now. Mm. Didn't used to be. I actually, um, the Gray Zone put up a, a really interesting video I found on, well, actually, I, I think I originally found it on their site, but um, but it's available but on it's, YouTube. But it's been around, yeah. Um, where they're interviewing a bunch of people who live there. Yeah. And it's, first off, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, but... It is interesting, and there's there's like a, a real like man. I like the I like the fire in these people. That was a bad choice of where it's went. <laughs> yeah. I um there's there's a rebelliousness and a distrust of. Do you know that there is a like a, a real movement um, among Native Hawaiians that uh, the U.S. is an occupying force there? Really? Yeah. Oh, I, it's I, been ongoing. Like really? there, there's. So um, there are, uh, I mean, I don't know how prevalent this movement is. I, I've been aware yeah. of it and I didn't like look into it for the 
the podcast, but you can definitely hear it from these people. Yeah. Um, they just, and, just their tone and their kind of, well, sometimes they're just saying it outright just too. what they're saying. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're forced to be Americans here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, there is a real like native sounds bad again, but, yeah. um, but there is a real movement among native Hawaiians that believe that the U S is an occupying force. Yeah. Hey, I can get behind that. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm for all people having all their freedoms all the time. Like, if they don't want, if they don't want to be Americans, they shouldn't have to be. Yeah, like, I, it, it goes back to um, uh, Lysander Spooner's thing after the Civil War yeah. it, that uh, a um, a people that is forced to accept a government that they don't want are slaves. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but. At any rate, uh, it, yeah. there was a, a bit in that video um, that I found really interesting. There's a guy talking about um, there's another island not very far away. It's like clearly visible from Lahaina. And uh, he was saying, you see that island over there? Like that used to be green. Yeah. It, it used to be lush and green and it helped trap moisture uh, within the islands and the U.S. military has been using it for target practice for 50 years. <laughs> and so now it's just a brown mound, like just a, a piece <laughs> of rock sticking out of the ocean. And so it no longer traps moisture. Yeah. And so the, the island of Maui is much drier because of the activity of the U.S. military over the last 50 years, destroying this other piece of land. Yeah. Wow. Um. And, uh, you know, one of the complaints that I saw from beforehand that people had pointed out is that these grasslands around the uh, Lahaina um, are drier than they should be, that they, they were already a fire risk. Yeah. And they have all this electrical infrastructure in there, like yeah, in the just, grasslands. Just around the yeah, dry area. <laughs> yeah. Um, another interesting bit is that they said that there's an invasive species of grass that's there that is... Um, is more flammable than their native species. Yeah. And so like, I mean, I don't know that there's a lot you can do about that kind of thing. That just happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if people are going to move from place to place, they're going to take things with them. As long as airplanes are flying around <laughs> yeah, the world and boats and, and everything, you well, know. boats too. Yeah, yeah. All of it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to be like, it doesn't even have to be, uh, brought around by humans. Like, you yeah. know, the, the little ocean rafts that, that are formed of, uh, messes of vegetation and so forth that get yeah. stuck together and float all over the place. Yeah. I mean, These the reason, yeah. yeah, the reason that there's coconuts on that Island is because of the same thing. Like every, yeah. everything <laughs> was an invasive species at some point because yeah. it's a volcanic Island that came out in the middle of the ocean. There was yeah. nothing on it when it first <laughs> it, it started as nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was started just as bald as that Island. The U S military has been bombing for 50 years. Yeah. Um, so everything there is actually technically an invasive species. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, uh, I don't know. Well, if if you had listened to the the media report this, you've got this all wrong. Oh. It's it's climate change. Oh yeah, well this I've is, heard. Yeah. We're we're, gonna, we're not going to address climate change. No, I know, but I'm just I'm There's just There's no way I'm going down that No, no, no. Right I, now. And I'm not saying you should. All I'm saying is is like that's what the media has been. I mean, this is like a prime opportunity for them to press the climate change. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you could make a, a strong case based on that guy's testimony that this was man-made climate change from them bombing all the vegetation off the other <laughs> island that used to cla uh, um, right. capture the moisture. Yeah. So uh, your media doesn't want to cover that. But I don't though. think reducing carbon is going to fix that problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, maybe reducing the military budget will. <laughs> <laughs> and in yeah. fact, uh, them bombing all the vegetation off the island actually reduces carbon dioxide output, doesn't it? Hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, Hate to point out the obvious. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it, it looks like they, they kept the grid up when um, these power lines went down and they got notifications that there was disruptions in the grid, but they kept the power up and it started the fires and then the high winds that brought down the power lines you know, fueled the fire as well and, and moved it along. Um, but then there's, so there is some question about this being a natural disaster. Exactly. Yeah. Although they're obviously natural elements that played in. Yeah. Um, well then they finally did shut down the power, but their whole water system is, is, uh, electrically powered. Yeah. 
And then they didn't set off sirens. They have emergency sirens for these kinds of emergencies. Yeah. But they decided not to set them off because they were afraid that people associate them with uh, tsunamis. Yeah. And so the people would w- run into the fire. Run into the fire, yeah. Because to people get away are, from the coast. People, people are people that aren't, stupid. Yeah, yeah, people aren't smart enough to figure that out. And actually, one of the ladies in that the Gray Zone video goes on and on about that <laughs> yeah. particular thing, that we're not so stupid. Right, <laughs> we yeah. really think well, that The we, siren's going off, better run towards the fire. <laughs> yeah, you really think we can't figure out to run away from the fire? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and that, it, you know, that these are emergency systems. They're not specifically for tsunamis anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they did finally send out some notifications. So they actually contained the fire at, at one point. Yeah. Um, but then it flared back up again. Yeah, because then they have like 80 mile an hour winds or something that was 60 like... 60 is what I... Oh, okay. Yeah. Is what I read. Yeah. Um, I had heard it, 80. I mean, but it I... could have gusted up higher. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it might have said 60 mile an hour sustained wind, so it could have gusted could up have gust, Yeah. Either way, that's a lot of wind when you're dealing with fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, but they did have it contained at one point, and then it flared up again. Um, and after it flared up again, uh, it took them an hour to send out noti- emergency notifications. Yeah. So that could have been done a lot quicker too. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a this this is a failure of government on a bunch of levels. Yeah. Uh, of course, the the power company is privately owned, but it's a it's a publicly mandated. Um, Utility. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's not what I was going to say. It's a... Uh, why can't I think of the word? It's <laughs> it, it doesn't have any competition. Um, oh, um, Monopoly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. My favorite board game. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the association that I need to make right there. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a publicly, publicly mandated Monopoly. Yeah. And uh, so there's no market at work with yeah. that, even though it's a private company. Yeah. Um, and then of course, yeah, government failures on like actual government failures on a bunch of levels. Yeah. Um, including their, um, maintaining the grasslands around there. They were notified in, in advance that they, um, uh, that they were a fire risk and it's all, uh, publicly owned. So government owned property and neglected it and they, yeah, they didn't do anything about it. Yeah. So, um, now, on the bright side, they've given all these people $700 to rebuild their lives. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to help. Uh, while at the same time offering another billion dollars in military aid to Ukraine this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people are real excited about that. <laughs> yeah, I bet they are. Uh, but there is some... I mean, <laughs> there is some conspiracy stuff to talk about with this that I think is... Oh, I, I should point out, uh, in terms of government... We saw this after... Hurricane Ike? No, no, no. Uh, Harvey. Harvey? Yeah. That was the more recent one with uh, Irma was in the same year. Harvey was in Texas, and then a f- uh, actually just like a month later, Irma was in Florida, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I get them all, they all run together. Oh, but. I know. Um, they shouldn't for me because it's like a real important... <laughs> like, I it's can measure, really part I of your job, yeah, right? <laughs> I should be measuring out years by these things, but, yeah. uh, but I don't. Um, Anyway, uh, there was what the people in this video were talking about on, uh, in these interviews. They were talking about that they had um, they had local support, local aid set up very quickly after the fire with people bringing in food and water and blankets and like you know all kinds of things that people would need, all these essentials that people would need yeah. um, from other parts of the island and from other islands. Um, so they had a, like a good local aid network set up to help people out, and that the government came in and shut it down. Yeah. So oh, they could set up their own aid. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, just how ridiculous is that? But I remember that same kind of thing happening yep. after Harvey. It did. I, um, I remember Where that people, now. like, yeah. individuals were going in, and, like, and not just offering aid. Individuals were going in and rescuing people from floods. Yeah, yeah. And then being prosecuted for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, I specifically remember one video of a guy, and he was in this, like, it was like this boat like truck or something i don't remember it was this huge monstrosity of a thing Mm -hmm. and and that's what he was doing he was going around like getting people off the roofs and like 
helping people. And like the Marine police, like like stopped him and was going to arrest the guy. Yeah. Or they may have arrested him, as I remember. Um, yeah. But and it I, was, I said they were prosecuting. I don't know that they actually did prosecute anybody, but they were threatening. Well, him. they were stopped. They yeah. stopped this guy and told him he had to turn around and go home. That he couldn't mm-hmm. be there. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, and I mean. I guess in one part, one part of me is like, well, you know, I mean, it would be different if like the guy was looting or something. Yeah. But it was clear the guys didn't have a boat full of stuff he had took. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, a boat full of refugees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was out there literally trying to just help people, and mm-hmm. I just stuff like that burns me up to no end. Yeah. You know. Another bad choice of words. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was talking about the hurricane, but yeah. yeah. Like, same same style with the fire situation. Yeah. You know. Um, so, in terms of, like, real conspiracy thing to, to think about, there are a lot of real estate interests around here. Yes. And this is an old, this is an old town. Um, a lot of it's protected historic stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, one There's, way to, to get rid of that problem, that impediment to development yeah. to burn it all down. Well, because that was um, a lot of, you, like you were saying, a lot of it was historic buildings that couldn't be done anything with. And people, mm-hmm. there was a push to get rid of that stuff and go with the more traditional tourist trap type, big infrastructure, yeah. um, which is going to happen now. Like now yeah, that, that probably. Stuff, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it is still up to the people there, but they it's not like the government is helping them enough yeah. to... Um, to offset what they'll be offered for their land. Yeah. And and even then, like they'll be offered tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And it'll turn around and be millions of dollars worth of property, maybe exactly. billions of dollars worth of property. Exactly. Um, so these people will get peanuts out of it, but these are the people that are working at those big um, resorts conglomerate elsewhere yeah. on the Island. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so and I'm and I don't mean to suggest that the the fire was set intentionally or anything like that, but because I don't think that it was. Yeah. But I think that um, people saw an opportunity, some higher level people saw an opportunity. Well, to, to get, just let it burn. Well, and to get what they've wanted for a long time. Yeah. You know. Um. So some of the stuff that, like I, I'm inclined to attribute this disaster to incompetence. Yeah. Um, but it may be nefarious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think it's just people taking advantage of a bad situation though. Yeah. But there is reason to, you know, to wonder, to question. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see some people look into it and see if they can find any evidence that, that any of these bad decisions were made intentionally yeah. to get this kind of result. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but that's just the that's the type of thing you never get. Yeah, you know, there are going to be some people that are really interested in this. Oh, there's no question about that. But I mean, whether anything will come of it if they dig something up mm-hmm. would be be a whole nother scenario. Um, you want to play the Trump thing now? Yeah, we can do that. All right, let's play the Trump thing now. The left-wing lunatics are trying very hard to bring back COVID lockdowns and mandates with all of their Sudden fear-mongering about the new variants that are coming. Gee whiz, you know what else is coming? An election. They want to restart the COVID hysteria so they can justify more lockdowns, more censorship, more illegal drop boxes, more mail-in ballots, and trillions of dollars in payoffs to their political allies heading into the 2024 election. Does that sound familiar? These are bad people. These are sick people we're dealing with. But to every COVID tyrant who wants to take away our freedom, Hear these words. We will not comply. So don't even think about it. We will not shut down our schools. We will not accept your lockdowns. We will not abide by your mask mandates. And we will not tolerate your vaccine mandates. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's kind of a lot there for me to unpack. The first, that, that he's kind of stole the libertarian's thunder with the do not comply thing. Yeah. Um, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Like, I don't know, but. Oh, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. got a bigger voice. Oh yeah. <laughs> so who cares? Like, you know, yeah. I, the, the results are what we're looking for here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, it is kind of amazing to look at the, the resurgence of the COVID hysteria 
uh, in the media. Yeah. Uh, even though they can't even make the claim that they can't even really make a claim that there's anything to worry about. They, they're saying there's a rise in cases, but the cases are way less than they've been in the past. And, um, and there's no increase in hospitalizations or deaths. In fact, it seems to be, you know, less dangerous now as you would expect in a virus over time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but still be scared yeah. and, and well, wear masks that we have uh, plenty of evidence at this point don't work. And it, it's so interesting and, to me that, and, and I mean, he calls it out for what it is and he's not wrong. Like it's not a coincidence that this is happening in the lead up to another election. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've, I've been skeptical. I'll say to the whole, the last election was stolen thing. Yeah. Like I won't, when people start going on about it, like I don't doubt any of it, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also not fully sold on it. And I also haven't dug deep into it. So, I mean, yeah. I don't well, have, my position has always been that there's fraud in every election and that it's kind of a wash. Yeah. Yeah. But the argument would be that this would, that the fraud that occurred in this last one was above and beyond what you could consider a wash. Well, I don't know that it was fraud that made the difference. Um, I, I think the fraud was still a wash. I think that the the huge numbers of mail-in ballots affected things. Yeah, issued uh, made the difference. Yeah. Um, and I, and it's mostly because I think that the the there were a whole lot of people that voted that wouldn't have voted if they hadn't been given mail-in ballots. Yeah. And it's not because, well. Essentially, it's because in a normal election year where they weren't just issued a mail-in ballot, they yeah. wouldn't have even taken the time to ask for one. They wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, yeah it's something so, that's so under their so, radar that they care so little about that the only reason that they voted is because it was dropped in their lap. Yeah. Um, and that... But is that <laughs> really is one of what the problems you, with democracy right here, yeah. right? It, is that, like, talk about a whole group of under or uninformed voters. Yeah. Making decisions for the whole, yeah, you know, um, and that's there's a lot of that too. But there's definitely something to the fact that they're trying to reboot this and do it again. Um, yeah, it, it amazes me that they think that they can pull it off. Yeah, that it, it amazes me that they're pushing mask wearing. When well, it's wow. working. Like, have you been to the grocery store lately? I mean, I think so. I mean, dude, I went in Sam's right around the corner from your house a week ago, and mm. almost the entire staff was in mask. Well, coming down from the corporate thing, I uh, maybe I maybe know. it was, maybe it wasn't. But I'll tell you this: like, it wasn't everybody that worked in there, but it was enough of them that made me question. It. So, are they recommending this? Like, what's Probably. going on? Like, but there was, but you should, but you see it. Like, I work mm. with the public. I'm not seeing a ton of people in mask, but I still see them. Yeah. Enough that it's like, I mean... Well, if you think back, it's more than it was before, but you saw people in masks even before COVID. Well... There were people that... Yeah, but you that know, was that was like an absolute rarity. Like, you're it right. It, you did see that. But you also, I mean, because I can think, like, I had had situations where you'd have, like, a customer that, like, is in a mask and gloves, and even before COVID, that was just, like, this panicky like afraid to get sick person. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was out there before COVID, mm -hmm. but I mean, obviously it made this, there was this huge uptick of it during COVID, but the, the fact that you can still walk around and see people in masks and there has been an uptick in the past month or so here. of yeah. just <laughs> Now you're using that word. You've been listening well, to too much news. <laughs> <laughs> probably, <laughs> but, but it's the truth. Like there's definitely more people walking around with a mask right now mm -hmm. than there was a month ago. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't have any trouble believing that that's true. I, I guess I haven't really noticed it, but um, but well, I don't take, I don't take a look it. when you're driving around and see how many people you see in their car because you Please. will see it. You will see it, <sighs> man. That's one that really just uh, it's unbelievable. It's out but, there. Okay, so, so but here's the point though. It, it still amazes me, like that they think that they can pull it off, even though there is no evidence that masks work in the real world like the only studies that they have that show effectiveness of masks are the things with the mannequins and the little controlled environments like they, in in real life i mean shoot we had studies coming out like the 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 danish study came out in what like 
I don't know, June or July of 2020, something yeah. like that. Um, well, that showed that, but even then you're they making were saying, my, you're making my point for me though. Well, like, no, so we uh, knew, okay. We so, knew but th- early... this is how they presented it at the time. I, yeah. I remember that they had, they had the control group. They had, you know, with that, without the masks and the, um, and then the masks group and they were told to go about their lives as normal. And I know that there's other variables that go into this, um, where, you know, people that weren't wearing masks may have been more careful just just yeah. because yeah. and people that were wearing masks may have been less careful because they thought they were protected yeah. and so forth. Like I know that there's other variables that fit into it, but, but this, the data came out that there was no difference in infection rates between the masked group and the unmasked group. And yeah. I remember even at the time, like the obvious interpretation of that yeah. study is that, well, it doesn't matter whether you wear a mask or not, you're just as likely to get infected. But the way the media was presenting it at the time was, well, we see from this data that masks only work if we all wear them. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they were presenting the data at the time, which is stupid. Yeah. Well, but but it goes to the point that people weren't listening to that. People weren't getting and listening to the actual data and the actual information. They were just playing along with whatever the media was telling them. Yeah. And if you think that there's reason to believe that a huge cross section of the population won't do that again, well, but how many people wore their masks and got sick, got their vaccinations and got sick, locked themselves down and got sick, and then their whole family got sick? Yeah, I mean, you know, how many- you know what those people did though? They found the scapegoat. Yeah, they blamed the unvaccinated. They blamed the unvaccinated. Yeah. They blamed the people not wearing masks. They blamed everybody but the people that should have been blamed. Okay, so story time. Uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, so I, I was uh, I was dating somebody at the time who bought into it. And we, I'm not going to say argued because she didn't really... Put forth an argument. Yeah. <laughs> but you know me, I can't help myself. So I kept like going over data and saying that the, you know, the, it's, it's the whole mask thing is ridiculous. It's impossible for it to affect. I mean, just, just based yeah. on physics, like the size <laughs> of the virus and like, anyway. That's why and, you got to wear two. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, oh man. And she was wearing like a cloth mask, like not even like a surgical mask, not definitely not an N95, something like that. Yeah. I did see a lady, at, um, back then yeah. in like mid to late 2020 wearing a, a, um, a crochet, crochet mask. mask. Those were going around. Oh, I thought that was hilarious. I was like, she knows that that doesn't work. She's making a point. Well, and that's what I had I hoped. That's what I had hoped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, Cause I saw some of those. So this girl got sick. Um, And uh, yeah, so she, yeah, she got, uh, COVID and she was upset about it. And I was saying to her, um, that, uh, you know, it's not your fault. Like it's, it's a virus. Like the, it's going to do what it does. Like there's nothing, there's not really anything. There's only so many ways you can protect yourself. Um, so you, like you, you shouldn't be upset with yourself about about this. It's not, you're not a failure because you got a virus. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, it's not your fault. And she like yelled at me. And this is the first time, I, actually, I think it was the only time that she, no, it wasn't the only time that she really yelled at me, but there was, it hadn't happened very much. Yeah. Um, and she like yelled at me. She's like, I know it's not my fault. It's because of the people, the stupid people that don't follow the rules. <laughs> like me. Yeah. <All> right. <laughs> but I didn't get sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, and she'd literally left my house like, Three or four hours before she tested positive. Yeah. So you were exposed. <laughs> I was definitely exposed. Yeah. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. <laughs> but you were exposed. <laughs> but, and so, you know, but even even her, like the two of us going into places together and she's wearing a mask and I'm not. Yeah. For however long. Yeah. And she got sick and I didn't. And yeah. she still blamed me. Yep. Essentially. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, she didn't say it outright, but who else was she talking to? I mean, she was literally talking to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I understand. I understand your point. It's just, it, it's so much as ha- that was still 2020. It was. Like a lot has happened since. There's been a lot exposed since. So then. it's really easy in the time we live in for us to to be like, well, the media doesn't hold any sway anymore. And there's so many other avenues with social media and with podcasts and people are consuming stuff. But 
the the mainstream media still has somewhat of an influence on what goes on. Yeah, and and to, they still you, get a huge portion of their advertising money from pharma. Exactly. Like there's there's reason to be concerned about them trying to push this narrative again. I mean, yeah. who would have thought that what happened in 2020 and beyond could have even ever happened in this country. Yeah, that's like, true. Like, prior to 2020, like, you, you couldn't have... Con- that, that story wasn't a soul because nobody would have bought it. Like, mm-hmm. it was so absurd. Well, let, let's listen to a counterpoint. All right. So you felt that it was it was obviously wrong to force people to get the, the mRNA vaccine for COVID, right? Now, I would grant you, certainly in retrospect, that seems true, but if we change a, ch- a few of the variables, I think your your ethical intuitions and, and certainly political intuitions would totally change. So you make it a much more obviously effective vaccine that really does block transmission. It's like a sterilizing vaccine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you make it a much more dangerous virus. You make it a virus that's actually preferentially killing kids rather than old people, right? So now, it's, now we're in a, an environment where like, you're deciding not to get vaccinated is putting my kids at risk, right? Do you get to make that choice, right? And you might say, oh, yes, yeah, I should be able to make that choice as my body, you know, but dial up the the deadliness of the pathogen, you know, give us something like, you know, airborne Ebola that incubates for a month, you know, you don't know you have it and you're what you walk around spreading it and it's got, you know, a 75% fatality rate and it's mostly killing kids. No one gets to make that choice anymore. I mean, then literally the, the cops come in and vaccinate you. And I, w- I would say that all of us would agree to that. Oh, that hurts my ears. Okay. So that's exactly what you're talking about, right? Like you're talking, yeah. th- this is a guy who is, Saying, well, first off, I mean, the whole scenario is so absurd to begin with. He's like, okay, I don't think that you would be saying the same thing if all the facts were completely different. Completely different. Exactly. From what they are. Yeah. Um, but there's also the the part of it where he's like, he's essentially saying, what if all the facts were exactly what they were telling us at the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, cause that's the angle he's shooting here. Like, if you believe everything that he's saying like i mean that's that's what that was the story in real time yeah i mean they weren't telling us it was a 75 percent no but i mean mortality rate but no but they were and they weren't telling us that the the kids were preferentially dying instead no but they were they were they were urging you to protect your i mean the the underlining things were there though like they were urging you to protect your kids and they i mean they would have tickers on the screen on cnn all day of the death count Mm -hmm. like i mean so they're they're not coming out saying it's a 75 percent or whatever but they're like they're pushing it. Like, you're going to die. Yeah. Well, you, you remember this, the uh, um, surveys that came out later that said something like, uh, I think it was more than half of uh, people that described themselves as liberal or left wing or whatever yeah. um, thought that you had a better than 50% chance of ending up in the hospital if you got COVID. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Well, that's just it. <laughs> and that's because they were soaking up what the media yeah. was feeding them. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, a couple of things to address in his little his weird this is not the first time he's done this by the way no. like he's he's this has been his message he's, for at least a few months now yeah. i don't know why people describe him as an intellectual actually like i listen to sam harris now and i'm like this guy's and he's lost it <laughs> yeah he's well covid he, broke him yeah well he's so intent on a part of it i think is just a pride thing like he's so intent on being right yeah um and it probably really bothers him that he missed the mark so badly on this and so he's trying to justify it in whatever way that he can but one of the things that he's saying there and this actually this part of it actually doesn't surprise me from him is he's essentially saying that principles should vary based on the circumstances yeah (laughs) which i have a real problem with like, yeah because they're not principles, principles at that point yeah, yeah. It, exactly it's just an opinion then. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> um and so he you know he says towards the end of that clip he's like you know if all th- all these things that i were saying i'm saying were true um then then you would all agree that police should come in and hold you down and give you a vaccination 
but I don't. No. <laughs> I, I don't ever think that that's appropriate. No. Um, I, I think that that, you know, that kind of use of force, I mean, I absolutely reject the use of force of coercion to achieve your goals against peaceful people. Yeah. Like that's the whole kind of core of libertarianism right there. Yeah. Like this is why I signed on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the other parts of it is don't just don't make sense. Like in his scenario, yeah. if the vaccine is completely effective, if it's a sterilizing vaccine, make sure that you do not get the virus. Yeah. First off, I find it interesting that that's a real admission that the vaccine is not effective. Yeah, right. He actually says something. We cut the clip off a little short because, like, how long do you want to listen to that? But um, he does say something also in that uh, a little bit later about what if it was completely safe? A again, another admission that, <laughs> that hey, it's not. Yeah. you know, like maybe some of these reports about vaccine injuries are true, which they've been trying to deny for years. Yeah. But anyway, if the vaccine was 100% effective yeah. and safe... And there was a 75%, um, you know, mortality rate. rate. Yeah. You wouldn't have to convince people to do it. No, they, they, they could do it on their own. Yeah. And, and it was preferentially affecting children. Yeah. Like you don't have to, you don't have to force people to get that vaccine. Yeah. And then the other part of that is the people that don't get the vaccine. The only people that they're endangering is themselves. Exactly. If it's a hundred percent effective and you're vaccinated, you you're don't protected. have to care about the people that don't you're get the protected. vaccine. Yeah. And so there's still no reason to hold them down and force them to get the vaccine. They're only they're only harming themselves. Exactly. I just can't believe we're back to this. Yeah. I, I can't believe that this is coming up again. I thought that they would at least have sense enough to make it a different virus. <laughs> right. Well, the last one worked so well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know. <laughs> if it ain't broke, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I urge everybody to go. I'm pretty sure that Tom Woods still has his website up where he did all the statistics. Um, yeah. I think it was covidchartsquiz.com. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's right. I, I should have. I, well, I didn't think that this yeah, was Yeah, if gonna... you start digging through um, Tom Woods, though, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's covidchartsquiz.com. And he's just got, you know, they're all multiple choice. <laughs> yeah. Like if any of this stuff worked, this would be an easy test. Yeah. But yeah. essentially it's like every, uh, every page is like four charts that they show you yeah. uh, of different places that had different policies or yeah. actually it's generally three of them had one policy and one of them had a, the policy that we would advocate, Yeah, which was no policy at all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, essentially. Yeah. And he says, all right, pick the one that didn't have a mask mandate Yeah, during this period. And and they're like adjacent states or adjacent counties and so forth, and you can't you can't you can't identify them. it yeah. because none of this stuff worked. Yeah, yeah. Mask it's, mandates didn't work. Lockdowns didn't work. Vaccine mandates didn't work. None of it affected the spread of the virus. Yeah. It's it, I'm with you. It's insane that we're even having to have this conversation again after last time, but. Mm -hmm. But here we are, and like it's it's something that I caution people: we need to be vigilant about because I think you're right. Like I I, I do ultimately think you're right that they can't do it again. Like they're they're not going to be able to to get the people to fall for this again. But like I say, we we can't just accept that as like that's going to be the foregone conclusion, you know. Well, I mean they they prove over and over that the that democracy means nothing. Oh yeah. I mean the 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 people's will really doesn't affect policy. No. At all. So um no, but they they send out test balloons of stuff. Like they like I say, I mean if 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 it becomes clear that this isn't going to work again, they'll reel it back. Yeah. Well, I I worry about the places where it might. I yeah. I worry about like the Washingtons and Oregons and Californias and and yeah. New York City and you know places like this. Yeah. Um there's no way that could happen here. Oh, no. Well, it barely happened here anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what we dealt with the, in comparison to what other parts of the country dealt with is night and day. Exactly. And and um, and our governor was completely on board with the COVID lockdowns and so yeah, forth. But she she, at least she had enough sense she to knew know better. that, yeah, that yeah. There's, there would be riots. Yeah, yeah. You can't lock these people in their homes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, um, yeah, I, I feel sorry for the people elsewhere though that might actually have to deal with this. And, yeah. and in that case, Donald Trump has this point. Don't yeah. comply. Yeah. There's no sense in it. 
Oh, yeah. Now, I do find it interesting that he co-opted this when he was actually like pushing this at the beginning when he was a president. Right. <laughs> when yeah. he actually could have stopped it right from the very beginning, yeah. he didn't. He could have snuffed this out from the... Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what makes it kind of hard to listen to as, as far as listening mm-hmm. to him is because, man, like you you had the crown. Like yeah. you had you had the power and you didn't wield it. Is, is this him changing stances though? Like... Because at least up until now, he still bragged about Operation Warp Speed and his oh, handling yeah. of the virus and so forth. Do this, you think that this means that he's going to stop doing that? This could be a pivot. I mean, it's definitely mm-hmm. possible. It. I'm interested to see what he says going forward now. Yeah, I, I would be interested if to see. If he's just going to revise history and pretend that he didn't have anything to do with any of this. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely. I mean, he's Donald Trump, so yeah. he'll, he, it's not well, like he'll he have does, a problem. Well, if he does, I will continue doing. to point out that he had everything to do with this. Oh, absolutely. You know, in, in the same way that with the Ukraine stuff, you know, yeah. he's talking about he'll end the war in a day, but like he contributed greatly to the beginning of the war by deciding to sell them weapons. Yeah. Of course, he was impeached for not. Yeah. Right. So he was kind of in a lose lose situation. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he was trapped by the whole Russia Gate hoax yeah. to begin with that he had to be hard on Russia. Yeah. You know, otherwise he was obviously a spy. I don't know. Yeah. Like he was in a weird position, but he should have just said, you know, it's screw you guys. You're wrong. I'm he could have just been his be. own man and done yeah. what was right. Yeah. Which is what I would expect somebody in that position to do. Like that is the standard when you're the president. <laughs> <laughs> it should be, right? It should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. He's, he's a disaster. I can't believe that he's probably going to be our next president. There's there's a fair chance. If, if <laughs> he's either going to be our next president or he's going to be in jail. Like I mean, I I pretty well see it going one or two ways. I I don't know that he'll end up in jail. I don't know that he will either, which is why I think your prediction is probably right. <laughs> well, I, I think even if he's not president, well, then they have no reason to put him in jail. Yeah. If he doesn't get elected, then there's no reason to jail him. Well, yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Such a weird world we live in. <laughs> no, like we're talking about the United States here. This right? Is so bizarre. Um, so I actually kind of wanted to uh, reflect back on some of the stuff we talked about in the last podcast with the BRICS stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and just uh, a couple of ways in which the the U.S., I don't know, U.S. militarism or U.S. government generally um, makes the world less stable and less secure. Yeah. I think without intending to, in, in at least some cases. <laughs> in some cases, at least. <laughs> in Ukraine, I think it was intentional. Yeah. But there are some other examples that I think are important to point out to people because they don't, they just don't get talked about because yeah. nobody cares about these parts of the world. Yeah. But the U S has had a significant influence on the state of affairs now in these places. Um, Sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. And so I think that there's two examples to give to that are worth talking about. All right. Um, the first is the is Pakistan. Okay. So their prime minister, Imran Khan, was uh, was pretty popular um, in his election. And he was ousted by a no confidence vote in April of 2022. Now, at that time, he claimed that 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 whole thing, the whole affair was orchestrated by U S because of disagreements on, um, the, uh, like building drone bases in Pakistan and also, um, the Ukraine war issue because Imran Khan had gone to visit, uh, Vladimir Putin in Russia on the day the invasion began on February 24th. Oh, really? It was, it was a planned trip beforehand. It's not like he it went wasn't, to, yeah. it wasn't related to the invasion, yeah. um, but he didn't cancel it. Yeah. And, uh, which and means the, you're not with us. Yeah. And the U S was really upset about this. Yeah. Um, and he said that there was a cable that, uh, you know, about the U S putting pressure on the government to, to, uh, get rid of him. Well, that's not exactly what he said. He said that the U S like I said, he said the U S orchestrated the whole thing. That doesn't seem to be quite accurate. Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and put that out there up front. All right. Um, so, yeah. So it was an exaggeration that the U.S. orchestrated the no confidence vote. Yeah. But. Um, but we're known to do these type of things. Y- well, yes. And the Intercept <laughs> got the cable leaked by somebody inside of the Pakistani government. Okay. Um, just recently, like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, and published the whole thing. And it's the 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 Pakistani side of it, but there doesn't seem to be any reason to doubt it because it, it seems I mean, to it drive. just, yeah, it just matches. Yeah. Um, 
so it was the the U.S. Um, was questioning Imran Khan's and I'm, quotes here. This is from the the cable. Yeah. Um, quote aggressively neutral. <laughs> end quote. <laughs> stance on Ukraine and saying that the U S accepts that that's just Imran Khan, that it's just the prime minister's position, not the government of Pakistan's position <laughs> and suggesting that, um, that if Pakistan left Imran Khan in power, now let me back up a little bit. All right. So the, the, there were some, there's some internal political problems within Pakistan. Yeah. All right. So here's where the, the, his, Statement is an exaggeration. The U.S. orchestrated the whole thing. The no confidence vote came up because of internal strife. Okay, like there were problems. Yeah, but this is this is an illustration of the U.S. like putting its thumb on the scale. Yeah, yeah. all right to to try and get its Tip way. It, yeah, um, and and they did. <laughs> yeah, uh, because he was voted out. Yeah, but so in this cable, it, it says that the. Uh, Oh, dang. I'm trying to think. It was from Donald Liu is the name of the guy um, who was meeting with the the Pakistani contingent. Um, He's like State Department, some ridiculous title, but like it's one of these titles that's like two lines long, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean like two, like 30 words. (laughs) (laughs) It's his title. Um, um, But he's he's high up in the region. Oh, he has to be. He's got a two line title. Right. (laughs) Exactly. You can, yeah. you can measure the you can measure a man by the length of his title. Title, exactly. Right. Um, so he suggested that uh, that Pakistan would be isolated from Europe and the collective West. The yeah. U.S. and Europe and the collective West were Imran Khan with his crazy, aggressively neutral stance on Ukraine to yeah. remain in power. Yeah, but. If somebody else were to be the prime minister, that all would be forgiven. Oh yeah, and they mean economically isolated. Of course, yeah, yeah. you know it's a it's a threat on their economy. Yeah, which is why I'm relating it back to the BRICS thing and the whole U.S. wielding its yeah. power over the world economy as a weapon. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, the they voted to get rid of Imran Khan. Yeah. And it's not that the U.S. made them do it, but the U.S. is like flexing its soft power, its ability to isolate and st- starve out a country economically, yeah. to make you poorer, yeah, right, um, to eliminate you from the rest of the world, not yeah. physically, but just by making you persona non grata, yeah. yeah. Um, and everybody knows that the U.S. has the power to do that, yeah. And so this was a real threat, even though it's it's like a, you know, it's like mafia style. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but it is a real threat. Yeah. And the Pakistanis took it this way, and maybe they devoted him, voted him out anyway. Yeah. It's hard to say. Like I said, there was a real domestic issues that brought up the no confidence that vote in the first place. Point, yeah. But the U.S. makes the statement to them a legitimate threat to the Pakistanis, as a way of making sure that the vote ends the way they want it to. Yeah, yeah. All right. So there's example number one. Yeah. Um, now we we have these coups in uh, West Africa. Yeah. Um, Niger is the big one that people have been talking about for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so what we have here is uh, this all stems out of AFRICOM. So this is the Africa Command, the U.S. Africa Command. Oh, I um, thought it was kind of like Comic Con, but in Africa. <laughs> in a way. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. No, not all right. at all. Okay. okay. Just making sure we're all on the same page. So, um, AFRICOM is there because of the terror war oh, that okay. has expanded, of course, to the entire world. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, the U.S. has been training um, soldiers in Africa for a long time. Yeah. And I say it stems from this. I don't know that it stems from this, but this is like... AFRICOM is definitely an important part of this. Maybe we should back up even farther. Um, I actually think that this this really stems from um, the overthrow of Gaddafi. Oh, really? In, in 2011. Yeah. All right. So in 2011, NATO, remember, the Defensive Alliance. I'm familiar. Yeah. NATO, the Defensive Alliance, uh, executed a um, 
regime change in Libya, overthrowing Muammar Gaddafi. Yeah. And uh, after that, um, like the Libyan army had employed a bunch of uh, Tuaregs from uh, Mali. Yeah. But after the overthrow of the government, now we should also point out that that civil war in Libya after that uh, regime change is ongoing like, yeah. still to well, this day and, and nasty too right yeah yeah it's pretty brutal yeah um and anyway so the, these tuaregs that were employed by the libyan uh, military they returned to mali uh where they allied with jihadists and started working against the government there there's a coup in mali as a result <laughs> yeah um, now france got involved in the sahel sahel's the, you know this region in west africa um and uh, so then the France and France and the U.S. were fighting terrorists across Africa that were kind of released after the fall of Gaddafi. Yeah. Um, also, weapons inundated the region after this because uh, now all of these formerly secure weapons depots in Libya were essentially open. Yeah. Um, and weapons from Libya have flowed all across Africa and into the Middle East. Like there's a whole lot of it into Syria and it's like. Yeah. So it's all a of these, problem. yeah, all of these problems were unleashed by the overthrow of Gaddafi. Yeah. Not to mention um, that they have a like a legitimate slave trade in Libya now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and oh, I say legitimate. You yeah. Shouldn't be legitimate, <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's going on. Yes, it's it's definitely happening. And yeah. of course, uh, like a huge part of the uh, the European immigration crisis was as a result of Qaddafi's fall because Qaddafi kind of kept the cap on things there. Yeah. Like now all of these Im uh, immigrants are flowing through Libya um, into uh, France and Spain and Italy and Greece and, you know, all yeah. over. So those are just a few of the problems that <laughs> resulted from the NATO defensive alliance overthrow of the Libyan government. Yeah. That wasn't attacking NATO, by the way. <laughs> Just pointing that out. Yeah. Um, so then these, yeah, these these uh, jihadists started popping up all over. Um, France and the U.S. got more involved. And, of course, you know, the U.S. has been involved in Africa since the beginning of the terror war. Um, like, we, the U.S. invaded Somalia in 2002. Yeah. Well, I mean, so... <laughs> I <clears throat> I, I would argue we were involved there before the terror war because well, yeah. that's kind of what started the terror war <laughs> was the fact that's that true. we were involved there. Well, but <laughs> I don't know. The terror war kind of started because of our involvement in the Middle East, not in Africa, though. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. That, that's a distinction. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the U.S. military is there, presumably. I mean, like their stated Goal. reason for being there yeah. um, is to uh, reduce conflict and maintain stability <laughs> in Africa. Okay. But since 2008, um, there have been at least 10 coups in just five of these West African countries um, that were led by U.S. trained soldiers. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. And those five countries are Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, Guinea, Mauritania, and Gambia. And now you can add Niger to the list as well. Yeah. All right. Um, so, the uh, yeah, it's, it's been U.S. trained soldiers that have led the almost all. Yeah. In fact, from my reading, all but one <laughs> yeah. um, of the coups that, that have gone on over the last, you know, 15 years yeah. um, in this part of Africa. Yeah. So we're not really helping to maintain stability. And this is not to say that the U S is again, this is not to say that the U S is orchestrating these coups, Yeah. but the U S involvement with the intent of reducing conflicts and, and maintaining stability has actually done the opposite. Yeah. Um, so the U S and France fighting terrorism across the Sahel, but there's more violence, more terrorists, more civilian deaths, and more terrorist groups than there were before we got involved. Yeah. So, so we're not we're not being very effective. Yeah. We're not helping the situation. It's yeah. a complete and abject failure. Yeah. Um, but we're still pumping money and weapons and training and resources into it. Yeah. And then you it, and, that, and remember everybody that that money, resources, yeah. etc. That's yours. That's our money. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's where when you get that tax bill at the end of the year. Yeah, this is what it's for. Yeah, yeah this is where it's to train going. people to later on launch a coup in their own country in Africa. <laughs> right. Um, and you know the the excuses for the coups is mostly the terror the terror violence. Yeah. That hasn't been controlled by the existing government. Yeah. Um, which is worse than it was when the U.S. got involved. Yeah. Like this is not working. Right. Now there, uh, like I have heard some definitely like cynical ideas that this is exactly what we want. Yeah. And again, like the fires in, in Hawaii, it it could be, I mean, I like, I'm not ruling out the possibility, Yeah. but again, I think it's more incompetence than, yeah, you know, nefarious action. Well, and I mean, it, it, I mean, goes back to the military industrial complex, you know, I mean, that's, that a lot of people stay in the profit from this type of activity. Yeah. And that's why it might be nefarious action. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, there's, there's, you're, if you're making that argument, I'm not saying you're 100% correct, mm-hmm. but you're standing on pretty solid ground. Yeah. <laughs> um, I you mean, know. creating chaos in the region creates a higher demand for weapons and, and U.S. involvement, and uh, it increases the budget for the Pentagon. Exactly. Yeah. People, people stand to, to prosper. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so that's all I got really on that. I mean, I, yeah, I think, but it's no wonder that these BRICS nations are trying to find a way to get outside of the U S system of economic economic system. system. Um, I mean, there's, like I say, they're, 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 they're looking out for their own Mm self-interest and you can't blame them for that. Yeah. Yeah, No, I agree. Um, and they seem frankly less interested in, uh, in coercing the nations involved to do things their way than, than we are. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, we, we've talked about this uh, many times in the past, but you can't create a Western-style liberal democracy by forcing it on people. It yeah. just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. You got you to gotta let it happen over time. And maybe yeah. it won't. Yeah. And I'm not even convinced that it's the best way to go. But, <laughs> <All right. laughs> but you, it's certainly is not a, uh, it's not a position that you can, that you can force on people. Well, and I mean, you can't force a government on people. You, you look at all of these situations, whether it's Gaddafi or, um, Saddam in Iraq. I mean, you go down the list, those places are not better because we came in and interfered. That's true. Uh, Like uh, Libya is actually a really stark example, but it's true in Iraq too, Yeah, that those people had higher standards of living and uh, much Saddam. more comfortable lives yeah. under the dictator oh, yeah. than they do now. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's, it's just, you, you can't, you can't force that type of thing on a, on a society. It just, it, it doesn't work, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, Russia is a far better example. The, the Soviet Union broke up and things were rough for a while. Yeah. But they're not bad now. Yeah. In the former Soviet Republic, I mean, there's the the obvious example of Ukraine. That's not, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but for the well, most things part, things really aren't great there. But <laughs> <yeah>. that's, <laughs> yeah, that's but a whole the, another rabbit yeah, hole. Uh, we've talked about that enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for the most part, like all of those places are better now than they were 30 years ago when the when wall, the fall. Yeah, yeah, when the Soviet Union collapsed. Yeah. Um, there were some rough times, but and actually, I read something interesting um, uh, just recently. Uh, and it was a comment on a, a really good article about how poorly the counteroffensive is going. Yeah. Um, really detailed uh, strategic analysis of the the counteroffensive. Really good. Yeah. Um, I wish we had more time. I'd like kind of like to talk about that. But there was a comment on the article about how after the fall of the Soviet Union, when all these the former Soviet republics broke up that you know there were there were rough times f- for a while in a lot of those places again not really helped by the US yeah. uh, in fact the US was was very heavily involved in both Ukraine and Russia after the fall yeah um economically in in some less than ethical ways i would say yeah but putin came in and really kind of put the kibosh on the the apparatchiks and and the elites the um oligarchs that were running things yeah and said hey 
like this is how it's going to be. Yeah. Like you get to keep some of your stuff. Yeah. And some of it's going to the state. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not in control anymore. And if you don't like that, you got two choices here. You can sign on the dotted line and, and get in line with us. Yeah. Or there's the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's up to you which yeah. you want to do. And some of them signed on the dotted line and some of them Packed took the door. Left. Yeah. 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 Um, but nothing like that happened in Ukraine. Yeah. All the oligarchs stayed in control of Ukraine. Yeah. Wow. And I, I hadn't really thought about it in that way. Um, but they're, it's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, some of the Russian oligarchs that took the door Took it to Ukraine. Took it to Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> so, um, and, th- and that's not an endorsement of either side in this war. I'm, I'm just saying that, like, yeah. there's there's not a good guy and a bad guy in this. Yeah. It's just, it's not that simple. Yeah. It's just people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not going well for yeah. Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, all right, we should wrap up there before I talk for 30 minutes <laughs> on, on Ukraine. On yeah. Ukraine. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it just, remember, it's just people out there. Like, yeah. be kind. Yeah. Rewind. Right. <laughs> be kind, rewind. And A lot of people won't get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably, I don't know, some of our audience. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> A lot of our audience is about our age, I think. Yeah. Which isn't that old. <laughs> well, we, we remember that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Many years of rewinding. Yeah. Being kind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people are just people. Like, there's good and bad in all of us. Like, yeah. I wish I had... Oh, I, I think I might. Um, now it seems like a good time for the Solzhenitsyn quote that oh, yeah. I, I, I love so much. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, yeah. Hey, I opened to the page. Wow, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that it is appropriate. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is actually from uh, the Gulag Archipelago. Okay. Um, and and I just, I don't know, I just love this description of of the good and bad in all of us. Right? Yeah. Um, so uh, Solzhenitsyn writes, Gradually it was disclosed to me that the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties either but right through every human heart and through all human hearts. This line shifts inside us. It oscillates with the years and even within hearts overwhelmed with evil, one small bridgehead of good is retained. And even in the best of all hearts, there remains an unuprooted small corner of evil. Yeah. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. So, you know, nurture the good one. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Like, Remember that that's there's bad in all of us, and you just gotta you gotta pick sides. Yeah. Every yeah. action, every decision. Yeah. It's Make true. the right choices. Yeah. Um. So we'll wrap up there with that piece of wisdom from somebody else. <laughs> all right. And uh, I like it. Um. We're there are conflicts next week, but we're hoping to actually we're hoping to record early. Yeah. Um. May go on and try to get it out early too, right? Yeah, I, I was thinking about how I might do that if I if I didn't. I don't know. You probably I'll figure it get, out. Probably need to get it out there. I think I can schedule some that. things. Like I can put yeah. them up at a, to schedule it to go out at a particular time. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We're gonna try and record early and get it out. Maybe yeah. early. Maybe at the normal time. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to see if we can get together early anyway. So that's all got to be this, worked out. Yeah, this may not work. So there may not be an episode next week, but we hope so. Yeah, I think we will. Um, I feel and, good uh, about it. If not, we'll be back the week after that. Absolutely. So um, hopefully you'll hear from us next week. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and or Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, you can always email me at michael at the liberty and uh is that all the stuff that i plug i think so oh um so yeah i did i did start the uh the sub stack oh, um yeah. michael's meditations uh so you can check that out also um i try to put something up twice a week yeah it doesn't always i took the weekend off yeah Got to do it sometimes. So, yeah, I skipped one, I skipped one Sunday. Uh, yeah. But I've been trying to put them up uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, 
and it's a different kind of stuff. Like I'm trying to not put a lot of political writing up there because I have yeah. this outlet for that. Yeah. So if you'd like to hear my opinions on other things, read uh, occasional fiction, um, like, I don't know, movie reviews, stories from my past, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you can do that at Michael's Meditations on Substack. And I guess that covers it. So uh, we'll hopefully be back next week uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.